Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Tom. We're outside. And I'm not sure I want to tell this story. You're going to have to, because at the very least, you can point people at this video and say, look, if you want to know... This is the full here. story from the very start. This, this is the Ballad of Mad Captain Tom. I've stopped hating it now. They should really want a couch, shouldn't they? <laughs> 2002, 2003, something like that. This is when Talk Like a Pirate Day had started. 19th of September. 19th of September, yeah. Talk Like a Pirate Day was uh, a thing. And I knew it was, uh, I, I got involved with it because uh, I was part of a community that, that had celebrated it one year in the past. Uh, and it was, it was from news articles and things like that. And me and a friend realized that there was not a website for the day. And we thought there should be. So, I mean, bear in mind, the story I'm telling now is the one I've told many, many times to many, many people. So this might be a complete lie that my memory's made up by now, but as far as I remember, we realized there wasn't a website for the day. We thought some corporate chain's gonna try and glom onto that, fine. We're gonna set up a website for it. So we did. Uh, and it was yar.org.uk. I haven't done that voice in a long time. I'd actually seen that before I even knew you. Yeah. Yeah, because everyone had bloody yeah. seen it. Cause it. Because the original pirate guys in the US who still do it, who oh, that is their thing for the rest of their lives now, they can't back out of it. Um, they, they invented the day, they came up with it, and they said, they emailed me and said, we were about to do that. But look, it's always the breakfast radio shows that are interested in this. You're clearly interested in this, you're clearly sensible. Um, do you want to handle the British press? Well, actually, it was, uh, do you want to be handling the British press for us, laddie? Because they were still, they were still... They kept up the they act. They kept up the act. <sighs> and me, having never had any kind of background like that, I was like, yeah, all right, this sounds like, this sounds like a good thing. And they linked to me as the official UK... They, it, I was the only official other page other than their own, because then a load of other people, as we thought would happen, did the same thing I'd done, set up other days. It's like, no, those are all unofficial, but this, this was the UK press contact. All right. The next September the 19th rolled around after I'd put, uh, you know, a few... God, there was a free ringtone section. I got ringtones. Back, back when you had, like, that polyphonic ring... Time. Yeah, polyphonic ringtones on Nokia's. I, I got that. I'm not sure the copyright on any of that was cleared, but never mind. <laughs> it was just MIDI files, basically. Uh, and September the 19th rolled around, and radio stations called. And it was like, you know, this is, this is Solent FM down on the Isle of Wight. Um, we, can, we, can we do an interview with Mad Cat and Tom? All right, here we go. This is the voice for the first time in many years. Can we do it? Arr, of course you can, me hearty. Man, I'm worse at it now. I'm out of practice. <laughs> Arr, of course you can, me hearties. Uh, be calling me 8.30. I'll be having BBC Radio 5 Live just before that. So they called on a landline, because they called on a landline back then. Which, really, given I was meant to be at sea, not the best gag. <laughs> I mean, I had, a, I had a whole shtick, like, because they all ask the same question. And once you've done one interview, you've got standard jokes like, Ah, me ship, ah, uh, well, me, sh me ship be the, uh, the SS unsinkable, uh, sadly it sank. Like, it's a terrible joke, but it's a breakfast radio, so all they want is some idiot on the phone that they can riff off and talk back to. Something to fill the time. Yeah. <laughs> ah, well, he, I would, uh, well, yeah, I uh, shiver me timbers be a general expression, but this year, in honour of the day, uh, the hardware stores be selling their timbers pre-shivered. <laughs> Every time. Straight out. Same joke. 20 different radio stations. Like, the big year was, was 20, 20 radio stations. That's great. And then, one year, uh, I think it's got copyright claimed out of existence now, but someone once uploaded this to YouTube, so I, I got to see it. BBC News Round, the kids' news programme, interviewed me on the deck of a tall ship in Portsmouth because, like, PR companies were getting involved. PR companies were like, all right, we need someone official who can come down. Oh, yeah, this guy's uh, Mad Captain Tom. All right, well, we'll get this prat down. So I was on the deck of a tall ship in Portsmouth for whatever they were doing. So some company got you down to Portsmouth from yeah. the Midlands. Yeah. From York. From York. Uh, oh, then to, okay. to come down and, and do that. That is a hell of a trek yeah. to be a pirate for the day. Yeah. Well, I didn't have the costume. Because I was always on the radio, I wasn't anything like that. So uh, they, they had a pirate thing going on, so they gave me some spare kit and put a <laughs> scar on my face. <laughs> um, and I did that down a camera to Lizo off news round. Uh, and it was all pre, yeah, we know exactly what you're gonna say, drop out of character as soon as, because this thing, I dropped out of character instantly. I was doing radio interviews from their ISDN line. God, that's old now, isn't it? From their like high quality radio line. 
and I was, you know, gawky, uh, early 20s, ponytail down my back, which was great for the, for, the, for the character once I started getting the costume. Big hair in the breeze, worked work like a charm. But I was just this, this guy in this, in this radio studio. They'd given a, you know, eye patch and a, and a bandana to. And I come out from doing that, this is before I got into costume, and the guy says, all right, where's, a, where's our pirate? I say, ah, I'd be right here in my heart. And he goes, bloody hell. Because <laughs> I had the voice. And throat lozenges, many throat lozenges. <laughs> the voice is entirely inaccurate, by the way. The, the, reason, the only reason pirates speak in that accent is because of one actor. Um, and it's now been long enough I've forgotten his name. He played Long John Silver in Disney's Treasure... Uh, I don't know who it is, but what, the big Treasure Island. And he decided... Not the Treasure Island. No, the, early, the, <laughs> the proper Treasure Island. I cannot remember his name, which means it's been five years. Um, and he talked like that. That's, that's the sole reason that pirates speak with that accent now. Um, I guess pirates just speak like what they speak like. Yeah. It... Yeah. <laughs> so, moving on, moving on. Um, by this time, I was starting to get a bit tired of it. And I realised when I saw some comment on some forum saying that it should be talked like a pirate and get a punch in the face day, that this has passed its peak now. <laughs> I should get out of this. Uh, but by this point, in the UK at least, it was a charity thing. Uh, Marie Curie Cancer Care had taken it on as one of their days and was sending out fundraising kits to people. Oh, really? And I was pointing people at them. It's like, this is raising thousands of pounds for charity. I can't really back out on this now. Yeah. So I kept going. Uh, Alton Towers, the theme park, it's basically one of our Six Flags type things. Um, I, sorry, I keep translating to the Americans because the majority of my audience is American. Sorry, Britons. Alton Towers got in touch. They were launching Buccaneer Bay. Alton Towers is really good at PR. Alton Towers will jump onto any bandwagon they can see to try and get some press coverage. So they got me down. They gave me some comp tickets from friends. I took a load of folks down there later. <laughs> um, and I went down. And stood on a very cold lawn, giving an utterly useless lecture about pirates to staff who were there just to fill up the numbers, because that gave them some photos for a story. <laughs> and on my rider for that, they didn't pay me, they gave me some comp tickets, they me, and they gave me travel, maybe a night in the hotel. They paid me by giving me a proper leather tricorn hat. Oh, That's where, where that the came hat from? came from. It's like a 50 quid hat that was. It was, a, it was from a LARP costume store, live action role playing costume store for all the people who go off and hit each other with foam swords. I just thought that they would have their own prop. Nope, I, th they may have done, but it was on my rider, I want a hat. Yeah, okay. They're like, yeah, okay, we can afford a hat. We can put that on expenses. <laughs> That's where I got the hat. Then the costume steadily improved. Got the frilly shirt, got the medallion. Each, each one of those things has a story behind it for me that I won't go into. Um, got the coat from a charity shop, got the medallion and everything like that. And it steadily became this character that I could drop into when I needed to. And that was okay. Um, were you around the year it happened? Yeah. I, in fact, <laughs> helped campaign. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Because isn't it all... Yeah. All because of the one man that we've referenced several times. We need to get him on the bench at some point. Mr. Tim. Mr. Tim. Six foot seven. Oh, by the way, last time I described Tim, I said he's like Bambi on ice when he's drunk. Turns out he'd never heard that description before, and someone quoted it at him. Now, he's not offended by it, but I maintain he has heard that description before, but he was drunk. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> 2008, I think. This had yeah. actually been prophesied the year before. I went to uh, a writing group, creative writing group at York, and someone essentially wrote this as a writing challenge for something that would never happen. Fanfic? No. No. <laughs> just because just I think that's where the idea came from, it got chucked around as an idea. But the first I knew about the thing was uh, I was at a thing called Barcamp Baltics in Riga. It's a conference in, in Riga in Latvia which is, uh, I've just got rid of the coat. You know the big puffy jacket I used to wear? That's what I, that's what I got that coat for 10 years earlier. Wow, that's lasted. Eight years earlier, something like that. Um, yeah, big old coat. I was there, I was in the hostel. Because I was still young enough, I stayed in hostels. I wasn't angry at anyone who shared a room with me. Um, <laughs> 3 a.m. snoring Germans. <clears throat> um, and I get an email. Did you want to see my 3 a.m. snoring German? <laughs> No, Matt. No, I don't. Um, I, I got an email. It said, Dear Mad Captain Tom, do 
Do you mind us telling the campus press that you're running for student president? Do you want to fill in what was happening back in York University at that point? Because I was in Latvia. <laughs> Tim? I'm still a little bit annoyed. I wasn't there for the moment. But, but as I understand, Tim had filled in the application form yeah. for the Students' Union president yeah. in the style of Mad Cat and Tom. He'd written Mad Cat and Tom at the top. And he had signed it. Mad Cat and Tom. No, it turns out he didn't need to sign the form. Oh, really? No. Oh, wow. Yeah. He'd, got, it, it, he'd it, got a couple it, of people to, to nominate. He'd said the, the manifesto was, was to come. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, okay, it's my last year at York. I'm an I'm an MA. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm an MA student, I've got time. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> so we campaigned. We brainstormed some manifesto promises for Mad Captain Tom. They they required me to use my last name, it was Mad Captain Tom Scott. Because uh because they thought it was funny. <laughs> Uh, well, no, I was making a mockery of everything. Because, uh, as you point out, I was never involved in any students' union stuff. I thought the students' union was a complete waste of time. Uh, well, not a, com a necessary complete waste of time, but generally filled with a load of people who were politically motivated and hoping that at some point it'd look good on the CVs, which it wouldn't, because no one in the real world actually cares you've been a student, pro uh, student politician. That was, that was my thoughts. So we brainstormed some manifesto promises in a bar, obviously in a bar. Uh, free, free cutlasses for all. Um, a cannon pointed at the vice chancellor's house uh, in case anything needed. Uh, to, uh, jokes like that. Jokes like that. And uh, we sent some flyers out. And we we reached our budget for campaigning, and we <laughs> some wonderful people at the Gilbert and Sullivan Society conv made a kit that basically we got a porter's trolley. You know those, those big, yeah. big trolleys you you can pull along behind you. I remember you. pulling that along at one point. Big clunk, big clunk, clunk. It's a pirate ship. It's got a mast. It's got me with a sword on it. It's got a cast of pirates around me. It's got me standing on top of it going, ah, me hearties, vote for, vote for Mad Captain Tom. The plan was not to win. The plan, ideally, was to come second by one vote. To really annoy everyone <laughs> and make it look like we could have won, but not to win. Because who can win an election when you're, you're promoting yourself with a fancy dress brigade? No comedy candidate has ever won at your, well, maybe like 20, 30 years ago, but the institution's got a three year memory. So, like, it may have happened, but ever since people in student politics started caring about student politics, uh, no comedy candidate has ever, ever won. It hasn't happened. <laughs> then a perfect storm happened. There were only two other candidates for president. Their supporters hated each other, and it was alternative voting, so you could mark preferences, not for us choice. Both of them got disqualified. No. One of them got disqualified from campaigning for a day because they'd broken some, some rules. Um, and then it turned out there was a snowball effect happening because people were actually paying attention to the election because there was... I wasn't... I was a competent comedy candidate. I had... Gee, I had a publicity team around me who were making <laughs> things happen, not just writing a few jokes down. And... and it came to the... because there were exit polls. And you weren't just a person putting flyers up in common rooms. I came to the exit poll... Uh, so the exit poll came out and I got a phone call from the student press and they said I was winning by a landslide. <laughs> and we were in a pub, dressed as pirates. <laughs> and that was the moment where I had my first bit of, oh no, 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 no. And I think I said something like, well, the wind be, the wind be changing mighty quickly in these waters. Because I knew all my folks had voted early and that's what the, that's what the exit. No, I won. <laughs> I won, not in a landslide, it was close. Went to second preferences, but uh, but I won, and I don't remember that moment at all. I think it's filmed, isn't it? It is. It's filmed. You can see it somewhere online. Uh, YSTV's site yeah. will have it. Uh, I went on stage, and half the crowd is booing, and half the crowd is cheering. <laughs> and folks around me are saying, "We need to get you out of here after this because someone is going to punch you." There, it's one a.m. There are drunk students who supported the other guys, and someone's just come in who is mocking essentially their entire belief system and has won. Um, <laughs> This is 
this is, we, you know, we need to get you to a radio interview with, with URY. Um, we need you to be safe here. And I, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I said some things on stage that I thought were coherent, but were actually just syllables. Uh, I was, I, I, like, it's a string of syllables. There are no words there I thought there were. I can't feel my hands. Uh, you can see what I'm doing as I, as I recount this. I'm tensing up. It was, it was terrible. <laughs> you weren't prepared for the moment because... No. Because the moment wasn't going to happen. Why would it happen? The whole point was that it wouldn't happen, because why on earth would that happen? I was student union president at York for a year. Mad Captain Tom. Well, we worked out over time, and I'll do another video about that sometime, because it was, it was, it was a terrible year of my life. Um, don't ever do anything like it. Uh, I'm not cut out for middle management, and that's what the job was. It's a, it's a, it's a paid job is. very badly paid less than minimum wage much less than minimum wage 12 hour days frequently i was one of the few people who said no i'm doing this as a nine to five uh work life balance is essentially non-existent for the people who have bought into that philosophy that this is what you do this is what we're doing it for everyone uh it was tense it was difficult um there were rough moments with the other team who got elected because they didn't think that was going to happen either they all had, like the people who thought they were gonna get elected had life plans that involved doing this. Like I'd seriously screwed a lot of people up here. But I didn't have a major scandal. And I think I handled it fairly well. Like I know I cocked up a couple of things, but it didn't collapse. And the thing was, several years later, participation in elections was still up on what it used to be. The year after I got elected, it was still up. The year after that, it was still up. The year after that, it was still up. Oh, wow. Um, so I did change some things. Um, I may not have... But, and you know what? We did, we did Cutlasses for all. We actually did it. <laughs> because there's Roses, which is the annual competition between York and Lancaster. And we had a fan... Oh, my... The, one of the people who kept me sane during that year was Alex Lacey, who was sports president, um, who was just... Uh, diversion. Alex had the ability to, if, some, if somebody didn't like, he could muster words out of the ether and destroy them in one really insulting sentence. He swore like a sailor. He, he didn't give a damn for propriety of what Sorry, was going like on. Sorry, like a sailor. <laughs> he didn't give a damn for propriety of what was going on. And he helped keep me sane. And he provided the cutlasses because he was like, you know what we need for roses? We need some foam swords you can put in the air and shut. So all the York crew had these massive foam swords that were shouting in the air. It's like, this is great. This <laughs> tick. You know, we, we, I managed about five of the eight promises or something like that. We got a cannon. It was made by the Gilton Sullivan Society. It was out of cardboard and it put out a flag that said boom, <laughs> but it worked. <laughs> you know, it was, <sighs> I wouldn't do it again. If I went back, knowing what I know now, I wouldn't do it. But I wouldn't have found out a lot about myself if I hadn't done it. And, you know, it wasn't a disaster for the university. I know the staff liked me. I know quite a few people there thought it was quite good to have someone indifferent. I'm not sure how to work with someone else. I still feel the need to apologize for it, but it worked. I can think of one positive that came out of that. What's that? We're here right now. In your spare time, to keep you sane, yeah. you got all of your <laughs> friends together and did stupid crap. Yeah, I did. And happened to film some of it. And I learned to smile. You know that. Harry? Before, before that, before Mad Captain Tom, I used to smile like, because mm, no, it was a little bit awkward. I didn't really know what to do my, with my face. Uh, it turned out that going out and being on a porter's trolley and just going, ha, 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 me heart is, kind of unlocked, oh, I can, I can just do this. I can actually use those muscles. <laughs> And you're right, I wouldn't be here. Because I also had an extra year at York to do all that stuff. Yep. So there you go. That's, that's the Bald of Mad Captain Tom. <laughs> Apart from the bit where I ran for Parliament. Which, which is another story. We'll do that another time. <laughs>